Hey guys, Sam up here in the Adirondacks. It's a beautiful fall day. In fact, the bald eagle just flew by right before I hit the record button. But I want to give you a gear review on one of the most requested items, and that is the new Move Shoot Move Star Tracker, which I have right here. So the first thing I love about this is how portable it is. As you saw, I literally was able to fit it in my pocket here, and it only weighs about a pound. It's very lightweight, and uh, if you're looking for something to take on a backpacking trip or just a long hike, this is by far the best star tracker to do that. Now, today I hiked up to Mount Joe here, and it was a long, it was only about a mile, but it was a very strenuous uphill hike. And I can tell you right now, I never would have brought in something like the Skywatcher Star Adventure. It's just too big and bulky and heavy, especially if you're bringing around the counterweight kits. It's just not ideal for hikers. So for those of you who are looking for a lightweight and portable option, again, the Move Shoot Move Tracker is an awesome choice. Now, one of my favorite features of this tracker is actually how you polar align it. Every other star tracker on the market has a polar scope that you have to use, and that's very difficult to do, especially for beginners. Basically, what you have to do is point it up towards the North Star, look through the polar scope. A lot of people can't even see anything through the polar scope, and it's just really difficult. I've had a lot of people just get frustrated and sometimes even give up. So one of the things I love about the Move Shoot Move Tracker is that it comes bundled with a laser pointer, provided you choose the correct bundle. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up now. It takes three seconds to do, and it really will revolutionize your polar alignment experience. So you can see here, it comes with a little bracket and some 3D printed screws to really help keep the weight down. And what you're gonna do is just clamp it right onto your Move Shoot Move Tracker, tighten it down, and then at that point, you can grab the included laser pointer, and then you'll just slide that right in the back, tighten down that screw, and then there you go, no polar scope required. At this point, you would put your tracker on your ball head, aim it up towards the North Star, turn on the laser pointer, and then at that point, you just move the ball head around until the laser pointer is pointing at Polaris. And to be honest, I've never had a laser pointer. You would think as an astrophotographer, I would have had one of these for years, but I did not get a laser pointer until I got the Move Shoot Mini, uh, Move Shoot Move Tracker, it came with it. Uh, again, if you get the correct bundle. So I really love having these for my polar alignment now. As soon as you're pointed up at players, you know it, and that's it. So when I first used the Move Shoot Move Tracker with the laser pointer, it literally took me about three seconds to do a polar alignment, and that's amazing. You know, if you're using any other tracker, you could spend five, 10, 15 minutes trying to do a polar alignment with a polar scope, depending on how bad your eyesight is and how dark the sky is. So this really revolutionizes everything. And I'm frankly surprised no other company has thought it to do this. So I highly recommend this tracker, even if you're a beginner, just because the polar alignment process is so simple and it shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds at the most to get a very precise polar alignment. Next, I wanna talk about the tracking accuracy of the Move Shoot Move. And I gotta admit, I was really impressed. I was not expecting much because the tracker is so small and lightweight. But when I was using my Nikon D750 and 14 to 24 millimeter lens, using my three second polar alignment with a laser pointer, I was easily able to get five minute long exposures with sharp stars, which is really remarkable for a tracker like this. And then just to test it as much as I could, I went all the way into 70 millimeters and I was able to get between a minute to two minutes with still having sharp stars. Again, that was with a very quick polar alignment and no counterweights or anything required, even for a big heavy camera in lens. So that right there shows you just how well designed at least the internals are for the Move Shoot Move. Now I do have a few problems with the Move Shoot Move tracker. It's not perfect. Uh, the first problem I have is with the battery life. According to their website and manual, it's only rated for five hours. And as I mentioned, this tracker is really designed for people who are going on hiking and backpacking trips because you can carry it around very easily. But if it only has a five hour battery life, you'll probably also need to bring a little battery charger with you that way you can recharge it after your first night of shooting just to be safe because you don't want it to die on you in the middle of the field. And if you look here on the side, it has a USB-C port. So you can just plug this into any laptop or battery charger and recharge the internal battery. So I'm glad it has a rechargeable battery, but again, it's kind of short uh, in terms of battery life. The Skyguider Pro, for example, can shoot 20 hours with its built-in battery. The other problem I have with the Move Shoot Move Tracker is the way you attach your ball head to the tracker itself. And every other tracker on the market usually has a screw that's built in to the camera mount and then you just screw on your ball head. But with the Move Shoot Move, they just give you a screw and you have to screw that in a little bit to your ball head and then screw that whole thing into the tracker or vice versa. So it's not really easy to do. It's possible that the screw will go all the way into your ball head 
or all the way into the tracker, then you have to unscrew it. So point being, it's kind of a pain to do. And I have emailed Move, Shoot, Move. They agreed with me. They said uh, they're working on another way to do things. So as of uh, October 2019, it looks like they're aware of it and they might fix it in a upcoming release. So just keep an eye on that. It's really not a big deal, just kind of a minor inconvenience. Another great feature of the Move, Shoot, Move tracker is that you can do time lapses and panoramas just by leveling it on your tripod and then attaching your camera on top. Now, I personally don't do a lot of time lapses, but I did one when I was up here at Heart Lake and it came out really nice. So it's very simple to do. You just turn it on and then select your tracking speed and let it run. But that brings me to another problem I have with this tracker, and that is the lights on the tracking speeds are very dim. So if you plan to use this tracker during the day for a time lapse, you really got to like completely cover it up so there's no light reaching it. That way you can see the red lights. Uh, they're very dim. At night, it's not a concern, but just keep that in mind. It's, again, a very minor thing, but just something to be aware of. All right, and here's how your star tracker should look once everything has been attached. You'll notice we have the main tracker attached to my ball head and my tripod. Pretty simple to do there. You will need an Arca Swiss plate though. Now on the side here, we have the bracket which holds the laser pointer. And all you'd have to do is just clamp that on, tighten down the screw, slide in your laser pointer, tighten the screw, all good there. And then finally attach your ball head to the main tracking mount. That's all there is to it. And then from here, what you would do is loosen the main knob on your ball head, rotate the whole track around, turn on the laser pointer, and then just aim up until the laser pointer is right at Polaris. Once you've gotten it there, you can lock down your main ball head knob, and you've now done a polar alignment. Again, it shouldn't take you more than 10 seconds if you know what you're looking for. And then from there, you can attach your camera to the ball head, turn on the tracker just by holding down this button for about a second, and then just verify that the red light is behind the main star here. That'll get you the right tracking speed. And at that point, you can start taking your photos and get some really cool shots. Once your camera is attached, the tracker is turned on, you've double checked your polar alignment. We're finally ready to start taking our photos. And the way we're gonna do this uh, is you will need an external remote. I'm using the Velo Shutter Boss 2 here. And if you look closely, you can see that the shutter speed here has been set to four minutes. That's always my go-to shutter speed when I'm shooting with a wide angle lens and a star tracker. And in order to actually use a four minute long shutter speed, your camera has to be on bulb mode. So the way you would do that is put the camera first to full manual mode, which you can see up top here. And then your shutter speed, if you just go past 30 seconds, it should now say bulb. Uh, your aperture is usually F2.8 or F4. And your ISO, I'd recommend starting off at ISO 800. And at that point, you can click the start button on your remote and begin taking your four minute long shutter speed. And you should have no problem getting sharp stars at four minutes with a wide angle lens. Uh, with the move shoot move tracker provides you've done a decent polar alignment using that laser pointer oh and uh, before i forget if you want to learn more about how to use your camera and a star tracker at night i'd recommend checking out my new patreon page where i'm going to be doing exclusive premium tutorials on there uh, if you sign up for the andromeda level that's 10 bucks a month you'll get access to at least one premium tutorial and what i'm doing is focusing on how to take your photos with the star tracker how to blend two photos together and we'll get into a lot more in the coming months. And that's really the trick when using a star tracker is that when you're using the tracker and it's turned on, these stars will be sharp, but anything in your floor, uh, your foreground is gonna blur out. Therefore, you always have to take two photos, one shot for the stars, one shot for the foreground. And that takes some practice to get the hang of it. Again, I recommend checking out my Patreon page or my courses on my website. Both of those should really help speed up your learning process. All right, well, that's about all I have for you in today's video review. Just to recap, the Move Shoot Move is a fantastic little tracker, very small, portable, and lightweight. You can literally put it in your pocket. So for those of you doing any kind of hiking or backpacking trips, I'd highly recommend it. There's only one problem with that though, that is the internal battery. It only lasts about five hours. So if you will be doing multiple nights in a row, make sure you have a way to charge the battery with a USB cable. That way you can keep using this night to night. In terms of tracking accuracy, this thing is rock solid. I was able to get a five minute long exposure at 14 millimeters and up to about two minutes at 70 millimeters. And I've got big, heavy cameras and lenses that I'm putting on top of here. And this thing still holds up really well. So that just shows you how well designed this is. And you shouldn't have any problems at all in terms of your tracking. And the great thing is when you're shooting five minutes, you're gonna capture a lot more light, 
color and detail and your photo is going to have a lot less green. It's really going to help your astrophotography images. And probably my favorite feature of the tracker is simply the way you do your polar alignment. With virtually every other tracker in the market, you have to look through a polar scope. You're lucky if you can even see any stars at all. Then you have to make some precise adjustments with the base. You have to look on an app to see where to put the North star. It's really a pain, especially for beginners. With the move, shoot, move, get the laser pointer bundle, put it here on the side, put it on your ball head, and then just angle it up to the North star. Once the laser pointer is pointing at the North star, you're done. It should literally take you 10 seconds or less. And then once you do that quick polar alignment, again, you should have no problem getting up to five minute long exposures with a wide angle lens. Now, just to be clear, if you will be doing deep space astrophotography, if you want to use like a 70 to 200 lens or larger, I would not recommend this tracker just because it's really not designed for that kind of work. And you might seriously stress it out uh, by putting such a big, heavy lens on there. So with that in mind, if you want to do more deep space work, check out something like the SkyGuider Pro. That should work a lot better for you. And finally, if you want to learn how to use your star tracker better and how to blend your photos together, you can check out my Patreon page, which is where I'm doing some exclusive premium tutorials for $10 a month if you get the Andromeda level package. And so regardless of your skill level or which tracker you have, you can follow along with those videos and it should really help you start taking much higher quality images. So for more information, you can head over to my Patreon. That's all I got for you in today's video review though. So if you have a question, you can leave a comment. If not, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.